Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and the latest news roundup for WWE 2K24 where as the roster and ratings reveal rolls on, we have several new reveals including brand new entrance and gameplay footage, we have confirmation of some brand new stars and returning legends, plus we also have some brand new details on the return of the gauntlet match, updated models and the creation suite. Before we get into any of that though, if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with all the latest updates on WWE 2K24, then please do hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. So let's start out with the latest updates in the WWE 2K24 ratings reveal, as Up Up Down Down are continuing to release ratings, with the latest batch seeing the reveal of cover star Cody Rhodes, who was revealed to be 93, which is 2 points higher than 2K23, where he was rated 91. Included with the reveal was some new entrance footage, which showed off Cody in the Raw arena, where he was seen entering with the Cody Vader entrance before then going on to wrestle Finn Balor. The next reveal included the first look at Intercontinental Champion Gunther, whose rating this year is 90, which is up one point from last year. Taking a look at the footage of Gunther, he can be seen making his entrance in the Raw Arena, minus the Intercontinental Championship, with the gameplay footage showing us various angles of Gunther taking out the Miz with a powerbomb. The next reveal proved to be a pretty big talking point, as we got the reveal of Johnny Gargano, whose rating went down 10 points to 74, which is probably one of the biggest drops that we've seen year to year. Making things worse, in the gameplay of Johnny, the attire that he has is the same one that he featured last year, as his model doesn't look to have been updated, though the gameplay did give us our first look at Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser, whose red attire has been changed to black. Up next we have the reveal of Drew McIntyre, who wished for a higher rating, though it didn't happen as Drew's rating was announced as 89, which is down 2 points. In the footage of Drew, we did get a look at him in action, though like Gargano, Drew's model appears to be the same as last year with the same black trunks and the white tartan design. Our next reveal sees all four members of Alpha Academy, including the debut of Maxine Dupree, who makes her series debut with a rating of 64. Slightly higher, we have Tozawa on 68, Otis on 74, and Master Gable rated 80. Taking a look at the gameplay, we get our first look at Maxine in action as she goes up against Tegan Knox, where she's seen performing a springboard out of the corner into a sunset flip. We also got a brief look at her entrance, with the WWE Games account following this up by releasing the following screenshot that shows Maxine on the ramp and gives a better look at her attire, with the image also confirming she has her own Tron. While Maxine can be seen in black and pink, Otis and Gable feature their yellow singlets as they were shown off in action against the Creed Brothers whose attire is the great diamond mine singlets from last year. Rounding up the Alpha Academy, we also got a look at Tozawa whose attire is similar to last year though the shorts have a little more red. Staying with factions, the next reveal featured the remaining Judgment Day members where Finn Balor was rated 87, Damien Priest 86 and JD 71. The footage that was shown in the Judgment Day also gave us a much better look at their models, with Finn Balor and Damien Priest's models looking similar to last year, though they do feature new attires, with Finn Balor shown in black with purple lines running down one leg, and Damien Priest in purple tights with a black vest. Meanwhile, JD seems to have undergone the biggest update, as his model's been updated to feature a new hairstyle that sees his hair tied back, a new blue and green trunks, and a white jacket that's similar to the one he wore last year. Included in the footage of JD, we also got confirmation of Jinder Mahal, who was shown with a shaven head and the green trunks that he wore while managing Indus Shea in NXT, which could potentially hint at their inclusion. In the most recent ratings reveal, we got the reveal of the Bloodline, including main event Jey Uso, with Jey rated the highest at 90, Solo 86 and Jimmy 84. Taking a look at Solo, this year sees him updated to include his black and red Bloodline shorts, with the gameplay of Solo also shown him in action against Randy Orton, where one of the moves shown was the elevated version of the Simone Spike, which you could see used as a super finisher. Moving over to Jimmy, his model sees him updated to include a new hairstyle that sees his hair braided, with this attire seeing him in his down since day one is shirt with multiple chains. If I stop the footage during the gameplay, this shot also confirms Luke Gallows, with the footage showing him in his big LG pants with a black and blue vest, which is similar to the attire that he wore at SummerSlam in 2023. 
As for Jey Uso, his model's undergone a pretty big update, as we're getting an older main event Jey Uso with hints of grey in his beard, a brand new hairstyle and updated tattoos, as Jey's model now features his tribal tattoos on the right side of his chest and the new design on his back. Showing off Jay's entrance in more detail, the WWE Games account followed up the ratings reveal with a teaser of a brand new entrance video where they went on to release Jay's full entrance which confirmed that he has his neutrons and new music along with a brand new entrance. The new entrance also appears to include Yeet chants as you can briefly hear Jay shout Yeet while he's on the turnbuckle which then leads to the crowd chanting Yeet in return though it's pretty hard to hear with how loud the music is. Similar to the Bray Wyatt entrance that was released, Jay's entrance also shows off Samantha Irving, who can be seen at ringside, as while he couldn't hear her in the video, it appears that she'll be the announcer for Raw. Moving on, we also got a new roster confirmation via a screenshot, as the WWE Games account released this image of Piper Niven, who is now referred to as Piper as opposed to Dewdrop, with this screenshot confirming a pretty big update to Piper, as she now comes with a green tartan singlet and denim jacket, with the model also seeing updates to the face, including what looks to be a brand new texture and makeup, along with a new hairstyle. Alongside the ratings reveal, the WWE Games account have also been releasing roster reveal posters that include confirmation of new superstars, with the first of these posters confirming Alba Fire, Bad Bunny, Bronson Reed, Isla Dawn, Thea Hale, Jey Uso, Maxine Dupree and Tegan Knox. The second poster was more focused on NXT, with this one again confirming Thea Hale, Carmelo Hayes, Roxanne Perez, Trick Williams, Cora Jade, Wolfgang, Fallon Henley, who was pictured on the poster, and then Channing Stax Lorenzo. So these new posters confirm the debut of seven brand new superstars, six of which come from NXT, while the other one is Rose Bronson Reed, who finally makes his debut after originally being planned for 2K22, only to be removed from the game at the last minute following his release. Moving on to the latest roster reveal poster, we have the reveal of some brand new legends. As posting on X, the WWE Games account shared a poster of The Undertaker, which went on to confirm the dead man himself, The Rock, Triple H, Lita, George the Animal Steel, Ken Shamrock, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and Mankind. The confirmation of Ken Shamrock all but confirms that he'll be part of the submission match between Steve Austin and Bret Hart in the 2K showcase as that bout seen Shamrock in place as the special guest referee. Another star returning via showcase mode is George the Animal Steel as he's said to appear alongside Ricky the Dragon Steamboat for his WrestleMania 3 match with the Macho Man. Also set to return is Mankind, as while Mick Foley has appeared as Cactus Jack in recent games, this year sees Mankind featured for the first time since 2K20. So that's all the updates for the roster and ratings reveals, however we did get another roster confirmation via WWE Games Associate Gameplay Producer Brian Williams. As speaking on the Everything Pro Wrestling podcast, Brian was asked if we'd see an update to Lita in 2K24 and if her model had been re-scanned. In response, Brian confirmed that we will see an updated version of Lita in 2K24, as he confirmed that Lita's model has been updated to feature her current appearance, though he couldn't recall if she'd undergone a new scan. So this confirms Lita as the latest addition to the roster, along with an update that sees her modern appearance, which is likely going to be based on her return to WWE last year. One other piece of news coming out of the interview was in regards to the creation suite, as Brian confirmed that the creator superstar limit remains at 100 creations, with the logo limit also remaining at 1000 logos. So this news is pretty disappointing for creators, or for players that download a lot of creations, as it was hoped that we'd see these limits increased, though it looks like this could be one of the limitations that Jinx recently alluded to when he addressed continuing to support last gen consoles. To end on some good news, Brian shared new details on what we can expect from the gauntlet match where he noted that there's actually three variations of this match type. There's a regular gauntlet that sees you able to take control of the remaining players after being eliminated, similar to the way the Royal Rumble works. There's an elimination version in which if you lose, that's it, it's game over and the match ends. And then there's also a battle royale version which is again similar to the Royal Rumble with up to 8 players in the ring at the same time, though rather than throw them over the top rope, you'll have to make them pin or submit. 
As for how many players are eligible to appear in gauntlet matches, Brian confirmed that you can have between 4 and 30 players in total. So that's a quick roundup of news from the last couple of days, though looking to the future, I was able to try out the game earlier this week and I recorded a bunch of content that I'll be releasing from Friday, so stay tuned to the channel and make sure that you have your notifications turned on for that. Until then though, thank you so much for watching this video, have yourself an awesome day and I'll catch you later.